All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover. So do me a favor before we dive into these topics. If you end up enjoying this video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. It helps the videos out more than you know. And if you are new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. I want to start off this video just briefly mentioning the fact that Media Molecule is celebrating the third anniversary of Dreams since it released. I feel like this is a game that really we have not talked too much about at all on the channel over the course of these three years, but they put out a tweet saying, Happy third birthday, Dreams. The Dreamverse is filled with boundless creativity and imagination, which never fails to inspire us every day. We've achieved so much, and that's thanks to you, uh, community. We couldn't be happier. So... Yeah, I thought that this was just kind of worth highlighting for two reasons. Number one, uh, Dreams is a game that I think still has a very loyal community. And while it may not be the most talked about game, uh, some of the things that people have created, it's kind of mind blowing. But the other thing I wanted to mention is the fact that now it's celebrating its third anniversary. It just kind of gives you an idea of, you know, how much time has passed since Mini Molecule released this game. And you can't help but wonder, you know, what else might they be working on behind the scenes but i also want to ask you guys do you still play dreams or do you just go check it out from time to time it's been a long time since i've been on dreams so i'm thinking you know i might have to return to it and just kind of see some of the stuff that has been created since the last time i checked definitely let me know down in the comments below moving on from that we're talking about an upcoming game that being wild hearts this is a game that's releasing on PS5 in just a couple of days. We're referring to PlayStation Game Size over on Twitter, who gives us some new information on this. The download size for Wild Hearts is going to be 54.7 gigabytes. The preload is beginning on February 15th, and for those who aren't aware, the game is launching on February 17th. But on top of that, there's an EA Play trial. You'll be able to play it for 10 hours. That's actually available now. I think that's something a lot of people might actually be interested in because Wild Hearts to me seems like a pretty straightforward game. I mean, if you are into the Monster Hunter uh, type experience, I feel like, you know, you have a pretty good general idea of what to expect. But because it's also a new IP and it's not coming from Capcom, I think more people might be inclined to, you know, want to try it before potentially buying it. So again, there's an EA Play trial for 10 hours available. And uh, the game is coming in at 54.7 gigabytes. Moving on from that, we're talking about Star Wars Jedi Survivor once again. This is coming from Games Radar, and it says the new gen version of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order helped respawn build Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Speaking to Play Magazine in a new issue, Star Wars Jedi Survivor's director explained how respawns work on Fallen Order's upgrade has helped the new game. The PS5 version of Jedi Fallen Order was a good proving ground while we were considering how to enhance Survivor, the director says. We actually considered ray tracing for the new gen Fallen Order because we were already building it into Survivor, but we ultimately scrapped it because the environment art authoring between generations was pretty different. He continues, but the process did help us define how we wanted to approach ray tracing on our modified version of Unreal Engine 4. Continues by saying Respawn didn't want to break what it had accomplished with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The director explains because the original game was so well received, the developer wanted to evolve and enhance the sequel, though, which is what the director believes Respawn has achieved with the final version of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So I'm in agreement with that. You know, I don't necessarily think that the foundational work that was done with Fallen Order needed to be completely reworked. But it's also really important, I think, to point out that they have confirmed that this game is built in Unreal Engine 4. Some people were really curious as to what engine this game was running on because it's current gen only and it looks very, very good. Some people were wondering if it was actually Unreal Engine 5. We're not quite there yet when it comes to UE5 games. We're getting there, certainly. But uh, yeah, I think that this is another game that can really just kind of highlight how far Unreal Engine 4 can go. Moving to the next topic, though, we're talking about God of War Ragnarok. We have two topics actually covering this game. The first is we're hearing that God of War Ragnarok is getting an official PS Plus premium game trial. This is being reported on by PlayStation Lifestyle, and they say Sony has finally added a God of War Ragnarok PS Plus premium game trial three months after launch. 
Unfortunately, however, the trial is currently only available in one region. Those in the US who have yet to play the game can now swing their axe around as Kratos for free as part of their subscription. God of War Ragnarok is a pretty big game, but the good news is that the trial lasts three hours, so that's enough time to experience what it has to offer. As usual, progress will carry over to the full game should players want to purchase it. Now, it doesn't say here how long it's going to be available in PlayStation Plus Premium, and there's also no explanation right now as to why it's only available in the US. Maybe it'll just be temporary and it'll start rolling out in different regions. But yeah, this is something I wanted to make everybody aware of. I'm assuming most people listening to this video have probably played God of War Ragnarok by now, but you know, there likely are still some people who maybe are on the fence and they happen to be subscribed to PS Plus Premium and they'll give it a try. So there you go. But continuing to talk about God of War, we have some very interesting insight into a different direction that the story was apparently set to go in. Have an article here from PlayStation Lifestyle again, and the title reads Kratos originally died in God of War Ragnarok. Brand new details on an original outline of God of War Ragnarok have been revealed by the game's narrative director and story lead, and it turns out that Kratos originally met a very different fate, with Kratos dying in the very beginning of the game in one draft. The original plan for Kratos in God of War Ragnarok was for him to suffer an untimely death at the hands of Thor, one of the game's antagonists. This controversial decision was set to happen early in the game before developer Santa Monica decided against it. In an interview with Midmax via VGC, narrative director uh, Matt Sophos said the following, quote, the earliest, earliest draft of an outline that we had come up with uh, that we took to Eric, Kratos died in the Thor fight at the very beginning of the game. He was going to die and it wasn't a permanent death he would get pulled out of hell essentially by Atreus, but now 20 years have passed. So yeah, it's really interesting to be getting this type of insight into what God of War Ragnarok's story could have been and what they were even considering and thinking about in the beginning. And at first, when I read this, I thought, wow, I'm really glad they decided against this because it's one thing to kill off Kratos. That would have been uh, maybe not the most unexpected thing, but some people definitely would have been unhappy. But to do it at the very beginning of the game, yeah, that would have been really, really bad. It kind of, you know, brings to mind another first party PlayStation exclusive. Uh, but I have to admit when hearing them explain how it would have worked out where he would have died in the beginning and then around halfway through the game, Atreus would have saved him and it would have been 20 years later. I got to say that actually sounds incredibly interesting. And I, I think a part of me actually would have liked to see a story like that and how it would have unfolded. But I have to, you know, look at what they did with God of War Ragnarok and, you know, commend them for just kind of sticking to what it is that they wanted to do. I'm assuming that it was ultimately Eric Williams who decided, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to, you know, go with something else. And uh, I mean, hey, you look at how well God of War Ragnarok's doing. I thought the story was incredible. It's breaking all kinds of records for Sony. Clearly, the right call was made there. But we are moving on to the final topic of the video, which is an exclusive uh, report or leak coming from Insider Gaming. This is coming from Tom Henderson, and they say Insider Gaming sources have revealed that Sony is developing wireless earbuds and a new wireless headset for the PS5, both of which are scheduled to release towards the end of fiscal year 23. So that'll be between April 2023 and March 2024. The earbuds named Project Nomad will have an approximate battery life of around five hours which is almost identical to Apple's AirPods, but slightly less than Sony's WF-1000XM3's six-hour battery life. Of course, just like almost all wireless earbuds on the market, the Nomad will come with a charging case that can be charged via a USB-C cable to the PlayStation 5. In addition, the same connection method will be used for the wireless earbud updates on the PS5. As well as the earbuds, sources have also said that the company is developing a new wireless headset for the PlayStation 5 named Voyager and is also aiming to be released at a similar time to Nomad. It's understood that the Nomad headset has similar functionality to the InZone H7 headset, but its price point has not yet been determined. Although not confirmed by sources, what makes both products release dates particularly interesting is their proposed release date. Last year, Insider Gaming exclusively reported that Sony is developing a new PS5 with a detachable disk drive, which is expected to hit shelves in September of 2023. If both scheduled release dates are met, it could suggest that Sony is planning a serious relaunch of sorts for the console. So, yeah, this to me is pretty interesting because... Uh, 
I have to say this is a product I would 100% buy immediately and I'm really happy that this is something Sony's working on. I've actually wondered why something like this hasn't already been developed, but I'm glad that they're doing it. And it's interesting that they're also doing a full-blown uh, headset with it as well. I was wondering if Sony was planning on just sticking with the 3D Pulse headset or if they were planning on bringing out something else specifically for the PS5. So it seems like they're planning on doing that, which is really cool. So there you go. Some uh, pretty good inside information from Insider Gaming at this point. I want you guys to let me know your thoughts on this. But that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Leave it a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon. And feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.